Unacceptable. Karapika shook his head sternly, fluttering his golden locks. I'm not sending you into a wasp's nest. That comparison worked on two levels. Think about it, though. While we've been chasing our tails over petty, unrelated crimes, our best lead has been right under our noses this whole time. Then I should be the one to go. I can probably justify the need for restricted access, if I can convince the boss it's paramount to Neon's safety. But if they don't believe you, your ties to the auction are shot. Not to mention they'll put a bounty on your head. On the other hand, if I go, they won't tie it back to you. You'll have a solid alibi if I break in while you're on duty. So you won't have lost your job even if we have nothing solid to show for it in the end. It's simply too dangerous. We don't even know if her fortunes go back that far. That's precisely why you going is out of the question. You don't know the layout of the mansion. Draw me a map. You shrugged, and he let out a sigh of frustration. Ugh. Karapika, I want you to consider something. You leaned forward and stared him down. Three years ago, the troop devastated this city. They simultaneously emptied the three largest banks in Yorknu, after planting a bomb in the North Office Tower to draw attention away from them. Do you understand what that means? Three hundred people were nothing more than a diversion to them. He mirrored your disgusted expression as the weight of that sunk in. Karapika could feel the repulsion seething off your being, and it was only now that your true colors bloomed before his eyes. Though he harped on the topic often, he had never really sat down and begged the question as to why you were actually here fighting by his side. Because you were friends, you said, or because you wanted to help. Those were the generic platitudes he accepted in the past, brushed them off as part of your charitable nature. But there was a deeper reason he now understood. The troop had killed members of your clan as well. If it makes you feel any better, you continued. The two responsible met their match that night. It's rumored that they were offed by Killua's family during the altercation, though only one was confirmed by the authorities. Why is that? There was no body for the other. So either they escaped and are still hiding somewhere or they were completely eviscerated in the attack so there was nothing left of them to find. My money's on the former. A certain light nihilism permeated his tone. Indeed. But you want to know something else? I pulled some data, and found out that this wasn't the first attack. There was a reported explosion of similar scale on an underground railway a few weeks prior, probably before the troop even decided to meet. What are you suggesting? It's just a hunch, but the fact that they keep coming back here leads me to believe that one of them lives here. Maybe even the boss. The severity behind Karapika's gaze was palpable. Are you really going to let this kind of chance slip through your fingers? There's clearly more to be lost if you go. He seemed to ponder this for a moment. I still disagree. Seriously? How can you- I can find another job. But you can't be replaced. His genuine words caught you off guard, and you looked down with a bashful smile. I appreciate your concern, but if Neon's past fortunes can tie a name and a face to the associates of the spider, we can squash them before they even see the boot. Mm. A wavering grimace painted his handsome round face. Come on, Karapika! This is the whole reason you agreed to team up! Let me help you! Did I agree to that, though? He raised an impudent eyebrow and smirked. Ugh! You threw your body back onto the communal bed in a dramatic display. Your lack of faith in me is insulting. It's not like that. I'm just not entirely comfortable with making a risky move without a guaranteed payoff. Fine, then. I'll make you a deal. You need to find out how long Neon's been using her power. If it's less than three years, we'll immediately abort our plan. So there's a plan already? There's about to be. First things first. Once you arrive at the mansion, you're going to have to conceal your aura. And wait until nightfall. The blueprints of the villa were rolled out beneath Karapika's splayed palms. Got it. 
A shroud of evening covered the estate like a blanket. Despite how rich and well-tended the gardens between you and your target were, little to no light illuminated the property. The pointed towers melded with the sharp treetops of surrounding pines, stirring into a homogeneous pot of countryside and skyline. Could it have been trying to cloak itself? You were sure that was the intention. Fortunately, this would become a double-edged sword for the unsuspecting manor, as the blackout would shield you from unwanted eyes, rather than shielding itself from unwanted visitors. Your butt was numb from retaining perfect stillness in this tree since daylight, but it wouldn't be long now before Karapika would give you the signal to move forward. There's a steep wall lining the whole perimeter. And the grounds are vast, so there's a long flat stretch between the gate and the mansion itself. You won't have any cover, so you'll have to move fast and be extra cautious. Noted. The first obstacle you're going to encounter is the dogs. They have several different breeds. Pairs of them. You won't be able to outrun them in the open space. Not to mention, they could alert the guards to your intrusion. However, we might be able to gain the edge if we move on a night where Squala is on duty with me. Right. I can't manipulate something that's already being controlled by another user. I wish I could tell you whether or not there are security cameras. But if I'm being honest, I didn't really look that closely when I walked in. I'll plan for them just in case. Also, I want to warn you to be wary of Dolzolne. As the head of security, he will almost certainly be there. I have no idea what his abilities are. But when I first met him, he showed us a dead man who was glued into the architecture. Almost like a portrait. Your eyes widened in alarm. So watch out for traps. Especially ones that look sticky in nature. Your grip tightened around the device in your pocket coating it in aura so the vibrations made no disturbance outside of your hand. You weren't sure how, but you could feel your accomplice's hesitation behind the message as you read it. It's on. You knew precisely what this meant. Somewhere, be that the mall, the hotel, or wherever, Karapika had confirmed the longevity of Neon's past fortunes. There was a gold mine of esoteric information mere yards away from you, just waiting to be unearthed. All you had to do was reach it. <sighs> After taking a deep inhale to calm the senses, you scanned your surroundings, observing the new arrival of a barred owl on an adjacent branch above you. Despite its superior night vision, it hadn't yet spotted you. How fortuitous. Upon descending the tree, you approached the large wall, roughly four or five times your height. You closed your eyes and let out the quickest burst of N you could manage. A highly skilled hunter would probably still be able to trace the location of the source, because of the dispersion pattern of aura, but it would be a challenge for a normal curator. Twelve dogs, and one guard at the front door. Unfortunately, there lay a sizable gap between the outer gate and the mansion, so your N couldn't yet reach the building's interior. Let's do a few extra, just in case. In your palms materialized fifteen mosquitoes, and you emitted them to the various locations of the canines. You could feel the sharp noses make their bite, sense the moods of the entities now under your soliciting manipulation. It was now you scaled the wall and hid behind the nearest topiary. The thick, sweet aroma of August roses filled your nostrils when the cool breeze caressed your cheeks. Right past the Dobermans you swept, hopping nimbly over shrubbery. The creatures saw nothing you didn't want them to see, but instead held the vision of an empty garden, one where you were non-existent. While this ability did not possess the potent strength of a mind control power, your mental image creation allowed the advantage of a larger group of targets that could be affected at once. You had made it halfway across the oversized yard when you caught sight of your second obstacle. The guard. What's our safe word? You tilted your head at Karapika. Pardon? You know, like a code to signal each other that the mission's been compromised. I suppose I can teach you some terms from my language. It's doubtful anyone else would be able to recognize it. That's true. I almost always forget you spoke a different language, since you have almost no trace of accent. Thanks, I... Wait. 
Almost. The blonde blinked in disturbance. Yeah, you shrugged. You say the word guess differently. When it comes from you, it sounds more like I guess. His mouth hung agape in horror. Ah, uh, you mean I've been saying it wrong all this time and you've never corrected me? Why? Because it's cute, Karapika! Uh, he gawked at you for a moment before his expression turned serious. Please promise to correct my error if it happens again. I make no guarantees, you smirked. So pick a word and teach it to me. <clears throat> After taking care to give you a poignant, exhausted glance, Karapika picked up a piece of paper and wrote something down. S-A-P-R-T-K-H-E was inscribed in his lovely handwriting. This is the curtain word for danger. He noticed you squinting intensely at it. Something wrong? There's too many consonants. <laughs> he chuckled. Yes, I understand. The Kartvelian languages can be confusing to those unfamiliar with them. Okay, so you'll send me that if something unforeseen happens and I need to get out? Mm. He jerked his chin with a swift nod. And if you send it, I will know to come to your aid. The complex landscaping served as concealment as you advanced toward the front door from a side angle. It was a good thing you came that roundabout way, for right above the unsuspecting armed guard was a camera focused right down the central pathway. Suddenly, a high-pitched whine in your ear nearly startled you out of your hiding spot. One of the Dobermans was hunched cautiously, drawing nearer to you. You knew it couldn't see you, as you still felt the power over its mind. So how on earth was it able to target your position? Shit! They smell me! I didn't think to plan for that! The dog whined again, and this time the man at the door took notice. What's wrong, Butterball? You see something, boy? The man's footsteps through the grass became audible, and you would soon be trapped between the dog that couldn't see you and the man that certainly would any minute now. A less panic-stricken version of yourself might have thought to use her mosquitoes directly on the man in this moment, instead of the convoluted route that followed. From the sky, a screeching bird came rushing downward, flapping and swooping erratically, in its mind you had created a predator, and the poor creature believed it was being chased. With a tad more concentration, you changed the surroundings it saw. It was now in a tunnel, with only one light to guide it, a hole just big enough for it to escape through. What the? The man swung around when the owl collided at full speed with the security camera, nearly destroying it in the process. The device sparked and fell off its hinges to the ground as did the owl. It still had yet to leave your headspace, so you assumed it was still alive. While the man was turned, you remembered yourself, and also nailed him with your bite manipulation. It was a bit strenuous, as it took significantly more focus to sway a human mind into believing your images. In his mind's eye, the guard saw the nearby foliage as his bed. Though you would have loved to watch him perform his bedtime ritual with a leaf he thought was his toothbrush, you had bigger fish to fry. The door creaked open, and you cautiously slipped into the dim entryway. Once you're on the inside, you'll be on your own. I don't know which room Nostrad keeps the fortunes in, so I can't help you in that regard. According to your blonde correspondent, members of the Mafia tended to hide their valuable assets below ground, where fewer access points for theft would be available. Thus the reason for Neon being on a low floor of the hotel, rather than the ritzy penthouse suite you and Karapika shared. Wait, there's no point in wandering. Lovely ghostwriter would definitely leave traces of aura, right? You held perfectly still in the darkened corridor, wondering if you could afford to use one more burst of N. Surely the one inept guard you incapacitated was not all they had. After a lengthy internal debate, you opted for a compromise only letting out Aura in a very small encirclement, to avoid detection. There! Almost immediately, you caught wind of something, a distinct tingling of the senses at the periphery of your range. It was much too weak a signal to be an enemy, so you felt comfortable approaching. Through a curved archway you crept, 
opening upon a large room with a chandelier. You halted and concealed your aura the instant your vision made out a distinct shape. You were sure your heart stopped completely at the looming black figure, a mere two feet away. The Nen you detected turned out to be human, after all. On second thought, maybe we should forego this plan until we can get Dalsolne out of the mansion. My instincts tell me that Squala might be less of a threat to you. You made a face at Karapika's assessment. Assuming his dogs don't eat me first. Rather the devil you know, as they say. He crisscrossed his legs and met your gaze. The reason I say this is because we don't know what we're up against. He curled a finger to his lips. Let's hope he's not a transmuter. Why do you say that? I have a feeling that type would be your weakness. You have to admit your nen to pierce an opponent, right? If they were able to change the properties of the aura around them, like Hisoka, they could stop your projectiles right in their tracks. I thought about that too. I honestly can't think of a scenario where you could win in a situation like that. Karapika's analysis was not meant to be harsh, but came purely from a place of concern. I don't disagree. However, we can't afford to waste any more time. We have to work with what we have. Your first instinct in this moment of white-hot panic was to grip the phone in your pocket. Perhaps you can make a run for it, send Karapika the code word, and pray you'd survive long enough. No. He was much too far away. If he were already at the auction house with Neon and the others... It would take several hours by car before he would be able to reach you. Not to mention, him suddenly vanishing from his post would be more than enough to cast a massive shadow of suspicion. Wait. I haven't been spotted yet, have I? The odd figure had not budged an inch from your peripheral vision. Then again, you hadn't either. Moving nothing but your eyeballs, you cast a sidelong glance towards it. You almost snorted at yourself for being so jumpy. It was, indeed, a human figure, but it was only the haunting portrait of a man Karapika had told you about. After finally allowing yourself to breathe again, you caught a familiar bitter aroma wafting in your direction. It was now you thanked your lucky stars that you hadn't actually laughed at yourself, for a new observation sent chills down your spine. You gulped, not at the disturbing fate of the man in the wall but at the cup on the parlor room table. Fresh steam came dancing upwards from the hot liquid. Someone else was here. You're sure you've memorized the layout? We can go over it one more time if- Yes, already, Karapika! You approached the door. Did you forget I'm a hunter too? Sheesh. He had been harping on the same points over and over, and it was starting to get exhausting. I haven't forgotten, he said quietly as he fidgeted with his tabard. If you hadn't been so in tune with his subtle mannerisms by this point, you wouldn't have noticed it. So you've gotten everything you need, then? He saw you nod, and it was all he could do to not ask once more if you were sure. All right, then. You finally grabbed the doorknob of the penthouse. Traveler, one last thing. What? You threw your head back and suddenly stilled at a warm touch. Your annoyed expression softened when his hands enveloped one of yours. A gentle concern flickered in his eyes, and you couldn't help but gift him a sympathetic smile. Be careful. Ooh, look at this one! Neon squealed in delight at the expensive items dangled before her. Under protective glass, of course. The pre-auction showcase was packed with people. Everyone wanted an up-close look at the merchandise they would soon be bidding on. Karapika stood in the corner, checking his phone frequently. She should have given me a checkpoint signal by now. He began to tap his foot impatiently. Maybe she's just being cautious. I should probably assume no news is good news. She should be able to find what she's looking for. The blonde male glanced to his overly enthusiastic ward and sighed. <sighs> That is, assuming the Nostrons keep the fortunes at home, and not hidden at some remote location. <sighs> His eyes widened, 
and he was inflicted with a sudden spike of worry. Why hadn't I considered that until now? He chewed his lip in apprehension. Did we jump the gun? Was this a reckless move? Karabika, are you nervous about something? Ah, uh, Melody's voice, though small and soft, actually startled him. He hadn't even noticed her approach. He truly was distracted tonight. Well, I... For once, Karapika was at a loss for words. More than anything, he needed to figure out how to provide enough truth to satisfy her curiosity, while still omitting all the facts that could trace you to this. He took a deep breath to regain his composure. Don't panic. Remember, she can read feelings but not minds. She has no reason to suspect there's anything bad happening right now. She only knows I'm uneasy. How can I lie without lying? Karapika chose his words carefully. Traveler insists on helping me with my mission. And sometimes I worry my path will put her directly in harm's way. There's no way she can automatically deduce this ties to the boss. I just have to have faith that Traveler won't expose herself. So she's out scouting for you right now? He closed his eyes without speaking, knowing she knew the answer anyway. I see. A comforting hand found its way to his arm. I'm sure she'll be all right. So don't worry, okay? How do you know? He asked skeptically. It's just a gut feeling. She replied in a sing-song voice, crossing her heart with a finger. Though there was nothing concrete about her reasoning, Karapika found himself smiling. He was washed with relief when she followed Neon into the adjacent room. He had managed to somehow tiptoe around her suspicions. If everything went according to plan, you would be leaving the mansion shortly with your findings, leaving no evidence in your wake. <laughs> Karapika whipped out his phone at breakneck speed and stared wide-eyed at the new incoming message. It had no words, but bore a photo attachment. With seven legs, it crawls. He read the bizarre epistle with a dreamlike confusion. What is this? To be continued.